But the Giants have been dreadful. Do you oh, realize yeah. that they have two wins, and one of them is because the kicker for the Bucks just pushed a, a field goal that would have won the game? That's right. I mean, well, look at that as the coming out party for Daniel Jones. And it was. Yeah, but the Bucks could have won the game. Should have won should've the game. Should have won the game, yeah. So they, they have one win, really. But we're, we're giving them two. We're not taking away that win. So they have five weeks left in the season. Mm -hmm. What do they have to do in the five weeks for you, Don? For Pat Shermer to keep his job. The team has lost seven straight. They're seven and 20 during his year and a half in charge. So is he the right guy for this job? You know, I, I was reading a couple of things today where the, the Mariners and the Tishes would be loath to get rid of their, you know, head coach again after two years, which is what they did with McAdoo, because how the fans would react and how it would look, doesn't matter how it looks. They have to make a very rational decision. Is he the right guy for the job? If he's the right guy for the job, you keep him, D despite what the record is. If you see stuff happening behind the scenes and Dave Gettleman thinks that the talent that he's giving him is being utilized properly, then you keep him. But if you don't think he's the right guy and you look like a bunch of fools for getting rid of another coach well, in two years, you can't but worry about that. You just don't miraculously just say, we think he's the right guy for the job. Why do you think he's the right guy for the job? Because if you go 4-12, and 12, you're talking about... You're talking about a coach that's won nine games in the last two years. So how do you know he's the right guy for the job? They now, have to know that. That's, I'm just that's why but, they but, but that's what I would ask them. Why? I mean, we talk about it's almost as if we're getting talked down to every week by these coaches and general managers. Well, you Philistines out there, you judge it by wins and losses. But we're so much smarter than you. We judge it by something deeper than just the final score. All right, what, what are you judging it on? Because although I think Jones has been fine, Ha has he started to grow into a quarterback that you feel confident is going to be the one to lead them next year? Do you feel good about this defense? Is it getting better? Are the games getting better? I mean, that's the thing, Michael. It's one thing to lose games, but are they, are they getting better? Are they getting closer to winning these games? That was a winnable game against Chicago. Trubisky was awful. And yet they couldn't find a way to close. You know, we're praising the Jets for their three straight wins. The Jets didn't play great against the Giants. You know, uh, they, they, they did some things defensively, but they were also brutal defensively, all right? And the Giants still could not beat them. So they've got five games left, as you said. All right, it's difficult to put a win-loss total on it because some of them are very difficult. Miami and Washington are the two games that you figured you got to win those, right? If you want to keep your job, you've got to win those. So they're, 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 they're two and nine, so that's got to be two wins right there. They're home against Green Bay. The Giants never win at home, and Green Bay's coming up a real disappointing outing against San Francisco. I give them no shot on Sunday, zero. Then you got two games against Philadelphia. I'm sorry. Sorry, Andrew. Does Philadelphia look like a world beater? Does Philadelphia look like a team that's impossible to beat? So well, defensively, they're, they're very tough. So what I would say is, you know what? If you want to keep your job, you've got five games left. Can you win three of them? So I'm asking you to beat Miami and Washington, which any, I think anybody should be able to do, and then steal one of the games against Green Bay and the two against Philadelphia. But if you're just going to get smoked in those two games and win by a field goal against Miami and Washington, what are we doing here? I also believe that if you don't win Miami and Washington, he probably is going to lose his job. Well, well now you're looking at a team that's going to that, that went from five and eleven to now three and thirteen. Now I'm not advocating for him to lose his job because again, we don't know what's going on behind the scenes. Would you at least say that it's up for grabs yes, at this point? It's absolutely up. And for And the grabs. best thing that you could say about him not getting fired is that the Giants had to do the same thing to McAdoo. That's probably his saving grace because if he followed Coughlin. I don't think he'd have much but, of a chance that, to survive. That's what I was trying to hit at the beginning of this. It doesn't matter how it looks. If you think he's wrong for the job, he's got to go. You can't worry about the optics of firing another coach after two years. you just got to do it. So, I'm with you, but that doesn't mean that that's how they're going to go. Yeah, but they, they, I've always said this over and over and over again, and usually we're talking about the Mets with this. You can't, you can't build and manage your team because of what fans say. Fans are fanatics. Well, I, they want changes I every minute. I understand that. But I don't think it ta it's a fan outcry, fire Shermer, that you do it. You do it because you brought this guy in, you thought he was the right guy for the job, and you turn around and win nine games combined in two years. So you were obviously wrong 
And now do you just be stubborn and say, you well, can't be we, we're, we're just going to keep we're going to keep doing it. We believe there's something there. Or do you just say, you know what? My bad. We messed up. We brought in a guy we thought was the right guy. He's the wrong guy. It's going to look bad optically, but we don't care. We're looking to win games. We need to bring in the right guy for the job. And, and I will tell you this. One thing that the Giants have always had going for them, they have always been looked at as the team in New York, one of the teams in New York that have great stability. But other than the playoff year in, in McAdoo's first year, they're a train wreck. Everything they touch is a train wreck. Train wreck. They make well. bad moves. They probably kept, they didn't probably, they kept Jerry Reese too long. Then they're trying to win when they should have been trying to rebuild. And they, they pick a, 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 a great running back when they, they knew that somewhere down the line they needed a quarterback. Maybe that works out for them. Maybe they found a gem in Daniel Jones. Maybe but, they lucked into that. But that couldn't have been the plan. Can I just explain to people, and this is coming from a Giant fan, this era of stability, okay, this franchise that does it the right way is a relatively new phenomenon, okay? Now, I'm of an age where I can remember there was a lot of dysfunction and a lot of disorganization. You think the Jets can be a circus. What do you think the Giants were in the late 60s throughout the entire 70s? With the number of quarterbacks, the number of coaches, I mean, they had no idea what was going on. And we've talked about it chapter and verse. Finally, the league has to step in on the Tim and Wellington Mara feud and force George Young upon them. And then they started to turn it around. But I could also tell you, even you think after they're that going turnaround, back to these days now? Well, they're, they're clearly going back to the days. And again, I have a lot of respect, all, all the respect in the world. For the Mara family, I do. They've always treated me well. I think they're very classy people. But they were flying planes over Giant Stadium. They were burning tickets in the parking lot while Wellington was the owner of this team. And then it was George Young, followed by Ernie Accorsi, that all of a sudden got the Giants into the conversation of being a class organization, okay? They weren't sniffing a Super Bowl in the 60s and the in the 70s. They and lost the three straight championship games in the early 60s, and then that was it. From 1963, when they lost in the championship game, until they went to the playoffs in 81, not a one playoff appearance from 1964 to 1980. Not one playoff appearance. And there was, there's some luck involved, too, because at the 3-12-1, and one, George Young wanted to fire Bill Parcells and bring in Howard Schnellenberger. So he decided not to, and the rest, as they say, is history. They got two Super Bowls right. out of Bill. And if the New Orleans Saints take uh, LT with the first overall pick instead of George Rogers, mm -hmm. all of a sudden one of the greatest football players of all time is a Saint instead of a Giant. My boy, he was not a Saint. Or, but you know what I'm saying. I know. Is that, listen, there's a lot of luck involved, but again, we're not talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers here, all right? But even before Chuck Noll got there, the Steelers were a mess. But there is a lot of instability, a lot of disorganization, even, even after... Um, the Phil Simms era, you know, you went through, you know, the Danny Cannell and the Dave Brown pick that was awful. You know, Dan Reeves was a great coach, but only got the Giants in the playoffs once. And then, you know, 94, 95, 96, a complete mess until Fossil came in. And then they went to the Super Bowl. But it wasn't until Tom Coughlin where then it started to click and they get Eli Manning. And I give them credit for that because they traded for Eli. So there was conviction in Ernie Accorsi. And they're lucky but, because Eli wouldn't play for San Diego. But great ownership really depends on hiring the right people. And before George Young, they got a lot wrong, and they didn't look like they knew what they were doing. And then you go from George Young to Ernie Accorsi, and all of a sudden, they are the flagship franchise, and they are the, the way you build a team. And they have not replaced Ernie Accorsi. Jerry Reese couldn't do it. We'll see what happens with Gettleman, but so far it hasn't been great. And now all of a sudden it looks like there's instability. So, listen, I'm a, I'm a proud Giant fan. I think there's a, lot of, there's, there's a lot of good that's come from rooting for the Giants. But they're not the New York Yankees. Okay, and they're not the Pittsburgh Steelers, and they're not, and they're the, not the New Pittsburgh England Steelers. Patriots. All right, well, listen, even even the New England Patriots couldn't figure it out until they got Parcells. Okay, I mean the New England the New England no, Patriots are a lot like the Giants, but but they've they were, had like a run of twenty. No, I understand years. that, but a lot of that had to go from Parcells to Belichick. Okay, but before before Parcells got there, the New England Patriots were the team you'd forget when you had the list oh, of teams in the NFL.
All right? They were a Met. They went to one Super Bowl and got absolutely destroyed by the Bears, okay? There was a lot of garbage. But then you get, you get Parcells and Belichick, and guess what? They're on an amazing run. And we'll see. But that, that makes Robert Kraft look like a genius when he's got Bill Belichick well, as his coach. Well, I don't know if it's luck, but you hire the but, right people. That's but that's what I'm saying, Michael, is good ownership is all dependent on who you hire. My, my, you hire clowns, your organization's going to be a clown show. You hire the right people. All you are, let's be honest, Michael, there's a lot of good owners as far as doing the right thing, but the fact is they're billionaires that happen to make the right hire, and a lot of the times it's just pure luck. Now, the, my biggest concern with the Giants isn't so much Pat Shermer. I mean, it's a concern, but is Dave Gettleman the right guy? Because Dave Gettleman, to me, shows me that he's a great scout because if you look at his drafts, they're not bad. If you look at his trades and free agent signings, they're laughably bad. Yeah, it's true. It's laughably bad. They're in a bad shape with the trades they made. And one other thing. Although Jabril Peppers has had a good year, do you realize, and I, I thought about this a lot today, and uh, I heard Jordan run on, on on the 10 to 1 show, and, and he kind of amplified it too. If you have Odell Beckham Jr. here, all of a sudden the defense has to be concerned with him, not with Saquon Barkley. There's nobody like Odell that's on this team. They've got pretty good receivers. Nobody's like Odell where they're game planning to stop him. And the secondary choice is Saquon. Now, every defense is trying to stop Saquon. So I understand you want it to fumigate the locker room, get, get Odell out there, get a draft pick, get Jabril Pe Peppers, the whole deal. Jabril Pe Peppers, as good as he is, he ain't, he ain't Odell Beckham. He, well, here's a question for he you. He's just not. Well, here's a question for you. Is Jabril Peppers Landon Collins? He might be. Don, do you think he's... I need to see more. But I so, really like, do. He's hurt now. He might not play the rest of the year, so it, it ends up being an awful season and a waste for him. Because if you could have... was.